Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to go pick up a car, and this one isn't at the auction with all the fancy tools to help us load it, like an unloader. This one, we're gonna to have to do the manual way. It has no front suspension on it, uh, none that I know of anyway, and I don't wanna do any extra damage because I need some of the front end pieces. So, my trailer and a jack is all I have right now, so I found some scrap pieces around the shop. We're gonna weld some stuff together and see if I can't make maybe a set of dolly wheels to see if it will roll up a little easier. And this is the beta testing, so if this works out, maybe I'll make not such a crude model of it, spend some money. This is just free stuff that was laying around. So let's build our dolly wheels. So first we need to put some holes in the end of our axles before we weld everything together because it'd be a lot harder to handle then. Now all our axles are nice and small, makes sense to drill our holes. We'll start with an eighth inch drill bit drill a pilot hole, and then we'll step it up a little bit. One down, now we'll do the axle for the other side. Try and get it centered. Two down. Now we can drill our hole a little bit larger. We're gonna be putting cotter pins through here, so we need a hole big enough for our cotter pins. That eighth inch hole just wasn't gonna cut it. One down. It was a lot easier since we already drilled our pilot hole. Trying to drill one hole this size would be a little harder on the drill bits and take a little while. Now we're gonna clean up our center support a rusty piece of square tubing that I found in the pile. Get clean up the edges where we're going to weld to. That yeah, looks good enough. Now we have our axle clamped up there and centered and straight. We're just going to tack it up there. A little bit on each side. Pull our clamps off and hopefully it stays on there. Test fit our tire. This came off of a snow blower. We'll put our cotter pin in that end and that'll hold the tire on. So it works, we might as well permanently attach it. Well, as permanently as I can. YouTube welding experts will tell me that my welds are horrible and it's going to fall apart. So hopefully it lasts for at least one car. We're just going to weld the front side of this end for now. Then we're going to do all this on the other end, flip it around, and we'll be able to weld the front side again. Tack the other side up there first. Just one tack on the back side. We can pop our clamps off of here. And the device that's not bolted down and try our wheel on this side. Better to test fit it now than weld it all up and find out we measured wrong or something else happened. Since everything fits we can go ahead and weld the rest of it up as best we can. We'll never be as good as the YouTube welding experts that have never touched a welder in their life but hey I'm doing my best. Now we're going to go ahead and flip it around so we can weld the other side. It's just a lot easier to be able to weld the front both times, so we don't have to reach over and weld the back. Oh, I almost forgot to remind you, if you have one of those new computers that transmits UV light through the internet, uh, you might want to shield your eyes so you don't burn out your retinas. Yes, I've really had those comments before. So now that we're all blind, my welding must be done. I'll give it the Scott test, a little shake, a little tap. Looks good to me. So we let it cool off a little bit, put our wheel on there, and stick our cotter pin in there. Now the only thing I have to buy for this project are a couple washers, just so it's not riding on the cotter pin. So I'll get a washer for each side, keep it from catching on the square tubing. And hopefully that'll work. We're going to find out. 
So now it's time for the best part of any project, the test drive. Try it out and see how it works. It rolls with no weight on it. Wonder if it'll roll with weight on it. Wonder how much it'll hold. We're gonna find out. So I stopped at Ace Hardware and picked up our washers. Not a sponsor. And the supervisor stopped by and wanted to make sure I was doing it right. According to the blueprints anyway. So we put a washer on each side. Put our cotter pin in there. And we'll bend our cotter pin over. And isn't it just like a supervisor? Just to always be in your way? One side's done. Pop this side apart. Put our washer on the inside. I didn't bother painting anything and it did get rained on. It's going to rust, but it adds character. A little patina. I don't know how long I'm going to use this thing, but since I didn't take care of it to make it last, I'll probably use it forever. Or at least until it rusts away. Had I taken the time to paint it all up and make it look pretty, I'd probably throw it away after one use. All right, looks like we're ready to go. Let's throw it in the truck, head on out. So here's our test car for our dolly wheels. It's a 92 Mustang convertible. Used to be a four cylinder car. Doesn't matter now, there's nothing in there. No engine, no trans, no front suspension. So the first thing you need to do is jack it up so we can get our dolly wheels under there. The rear tires are also flat, but I don't think that my winch is gonna mind, so we're just gonna leave them flat. Figure out how to put our jack handle together. And away we go. We just have the jack sitting underneath where the subframe used to be, so it should be strong enough to lift it up there. The frame rails are actually really solid on this thing. There's not as much rust as I was anticipating. Seems like it was a good buy. It's sitting on a cinder block up under the front of the radiator support. But since I need that radiator support, I don't want to drag that across the front lawn or over that rock and do any more damage if there isn't any. And yes, I am wearing gloves, but don't worry, the safety experts didn't win. It was more of a win for the clean freaks because I don't have anywhere to wash my hands when I'm done and I don't want to get the inside of my truck all dirty. So we're going to keep it clean. So it looks like we finally got it high enough to get it off the cinder block. We'll slide it out from under the radio support. Move our couple rocks that we got laying around. And we'll throw our dolly wheels under here and see how that goes. If I had to, I could always pull that cotter pin out of one end and then I'd only have to slide the bar through there. But there's plenty of room with no suspension in here. little flap off of here. It's gonna be in our way. Fold it up out of our way. We need to squeeze it up between the vapor canister and the back of the radiator support. Hopefully there's enough room to get it in there. And we also have to go around the mounts for the radiator. So we got it in there. We're just gonna set it up on top of those old radiator mounts so we can get our wood. Now we're gonna put our two by fours on top of our dolly wheels below the frame rails to give it a little more height and to really trigger the safety experts. Anyone for a game of car Jenga? Looks good. I'm not standing under it, I don't care. Now we're gonna let it down and see how it works so far. See if we're gonna need to add some more blocks to our game of Jenga. My jack sounds like it's dying. Looks pretty good. Good 
thing that Jack didn't need to go down another inch. It wouldn't have made it. Now we're going to ratchet strap our dolly wheels to the bottom of the radiator support to keep it from moving around in there. I don't want our little Jenga experiment to fall out, at least not till after it's on the trailer. So hopefully this will keep it where it belongs. All right, seems like that might stay together for a few feet. Let's go start pulling it up our trailer. Before we start winching it up, I'm going to put the jack down on the front of the trailer and jack up the front of the trailer. I'm going to leave it connected to the truck. It'll lift the truck and trailer and everything. That gives me a little bit of a better approach angle. It won't make it such a sharp turn at the top of the ramps. It'll be a little bit straighter. It's not much. Might drop the back of the trailer down a couple inches. And we're also not going to put the jack legs on the back of the trailer down because as the weight gets up there, it'll squat a little bit. Not too much because this car doesn't weigh much, especially since there's nothing in it. Looks like we're ready to go. One last walk around to make sure there's nothing underneath it. And we'll have to go over here and hold our passenger door closed because it doesn't want to stay closed. Trying to get it to latch, but I've accepted that it. it's not going to, so. Now it's time to start winching it up. Wireless winches make this job a whole lot easier. Onto that door. So far, so good. Working just like I planned. Make sure, we're making it on the ramps on this side. Nothing worse than getting almost to the top of the ramp and then falling off. Have our dolly wheel on the edge of one ramp in the center of the other. And now it's not on either. We've run aground. Thought this was a Mustang, not a Challenger. But our approach angle is a little steep, so we caught it on the very top. We're going to drag it over the metal part of our trailer, at least for the last few inches. And the tires touch the ground again and it rolls up nicely. So we'll roll it up towards the front of the trailer where it's going to spend the next eight hours. We'll put our ramps away before we forget about them. We we'll have a lot more work to do to tie this thing down. Honestly, it's a little bit more fun picking cars up from somebody's backyard than it is from the auction where they just set it down for you. So now we got our regular jack out. I felt like carrying it, I'm not dragging it through the grass. Get our block of wood out of there, and that now becomes a jack stand. Got a big block of wood for the other side. I don't want to leave it on the dollies just because it's sitting up there like Jenga and a couple bumps and those blocks would fall out of there, our straps would get loose, and the car would be just dangling back there. So we're going to make it a little more stable. Just putting this underneath the frame rail. We're trying to get the jack high enough. Down on the wood. 
should be nice and stable for the ride home. Put a jack in the back of the truck. I'll disconnect our dolly wheels that I would consider a success. I don't want to leave them just dangling on here because they probably won't make it all the way home. And then I'll have drivers behind me complaining when it goes through their windshield. And it's not really heavy. Pretty easy to carry around. I give it a 9 out of 10. Took me about half an hour to make it. It probably saved me more time than that on just this car alone. We'll just throw it in the back of the truck. Fits nicely. Throw a ratchet strap in there. Now we're ready to start tying down our car. I did leave the winch cable in the center on the back of it. Not really to tie it down, but maybe basically a safety. We'll strap it all down the right way with our rusty ratchet strap. We'll put our condenser back in here, about where it goes. And we're going to pick up all the loose bolts that are just laying up there from the somebody's that have been here before. I don't need them bouncing off and ending up in somebody's tire or my own. Get as many as I can. I'm sure I'll miss some. And we'll throw them in the car. And we got some more gloves. We'll just stuff those in the cowl. And pull this wiper arm off before it falls off. Make sure this one's securely fastened. Well, I can't get it off of there, so I think it'll make the trip home. We're good to go. Rarely get to use those. Even though that's what they're made for. Also had to tie the doors together because I don't trust the door latch on the other side. You could actually use that hook. But of course the filler knocks in the way for the other one. And there's no latch for the trunk so we had to strap the trunk down before we lose that on the way back. nickel the car's already paying for itself so we're back from middle of nowhere Missouri we can actually use some real tools to make our life easier we got some chains through the towers and we're gonna use our mobile frame rack to get this thing off of here we're still not gonna fill up the tires make it exciting and slow it down a little bit when it's wanting to roll down the ramps Back it up a little bit. Far enough that we can put the ramps underneath it, but not so far that we run into our blocks. Move the blocks first, and hopefully we got enough room to put the ramps up. Just enough. Driving the forklift up the ramps would have been a little bit too much, so. More blocks on the other side. Some 
Away we go. So all I actually needed was the radiator support and the aprons, but I couldn't pass up the special they were running, buy the aprons and radiator support and get half a Mustang for free. So I have the rest of a Mustang. Let's get our parts off of here and then we'll take a look at the rest of it because I'll probably be selling whatever's left unless I decide to buy one that needs a back half. So let's get this apart. We even got some bonus hood hinges. So. like somebody started removing this one. Didn't realize you had to pry them out after you were done taking the bolts out. Good thing I might not have got it then. Pull our little locks off our condenser fittings. And then we'll put our little Pac-Man on there. Can you say Pac-Man? Is that okay in 2023? Or, or is it Pac-Person, Pac-Thing, Pac-It, Pac-Them, whatever they are. Just clip them on there, squeeze them. It'll release the springs inside. And you can pull it apart. And it'll just go to the back of the little clip, pop them off of there, and pull them the rest of the way out. And then go our condenser in the pile. We're gonna bolt our battery tray. We need to strip everything down so we can see all of our spot welds to get to our aprons and our radiator support. And of course, the bolt in the bottom is no longer an eight millimeter. It's more of a 6.75. So we got our little turbo socket in there. And it's grabbing the head of it and it's twisting it off of there. And the water dripping out of the bottom lets you know it's working. It's going to make me take it all the way out with the ratchet. Maybe not. We'll get the rest with our Kung Fu grip. I win. Pull the wiring harness off. Got some ground screws to pull off of there. We'll pop the wiring harness off. Try not to break any of the clips. This is one of those rare wiring harnesses that hasn't been all hacked to pieces. I assumed Mustangs came with hacked up wiring harnesses from the factory because it seems like every one of them on a Fox body is. So we'll attempt to keep this one preserved. Both our other ground. We can unplug our washer motor. And unbolt our washer bottle. Slide out of the apron, and then we'll set it off to the side. Unplug our horns. And our harness is ready to come out of there. Another harness. Pop that out of the frame rail. And then we'll finish taking the rest of the harness off. Some airbag wires up there. Since the 
sensors have pigtails that are three feet long. I forgot how much I didn't like the old Ford sensors. And unbolt our vapor canister. We're actually going to need that for our build. And it's not broken, so. We'll clip our AC lines, get the rest of that harness out of our way. I can unbolt the bottom bracket for our air box. A little different than the one on our GT because this had a four cylinder in it. A little more ground wire on the other side to unbolt. Pop the rest of our airbag harness off of there and the rest of this harness. I'm just going to leave the airbag sensors on our radiator support for now. We do need a couple of them for our build. And put the hood cable. And then we can unbolt the hood cable from the hood latch. And then disconnect it. Got like a little curly cue in the back. You have to walk it around. Unbolt the rest of our harness here in our module. Move our chain so we can get the wires out from under it. And our radiator support and aprons are all clear, ready for us to start drilling out our spot welds. In pretty good shape. So before we start drilling, we're gonna scribe all of our lines. That'll help us line it up when we put it back in our car. Make our life a little easier. Just anything that overlaps the pieces we're taking off. Or the frame rails, and the towers go over it. The upper rails. We'll still measure it, but that'll give us somewhere to start. So we drilled pilot holes, eighth inch holes everywhere. Now we can go back over them with our eight millimeter, or five sixteenths in freedom units. There's quite a few spot welds on here. Luckily it is made out of Play-Doh, so it drills pretty easy. No high strength steel back then. And I think we got them all. So now we can start breaking all our spot welds loose. I know, I know, wrong hammer. It's also the wrong breaker, so two wrongs make it right. So if you need the right breaker for the job, head over to my Amazon store and you can pick one up. And you can actually pick up the wrong one, which is my five-in-one painter's tool. It works just as well. I'm gonna work our way around and pop it all loose. Doesn't take much. Actually got them in the right spot. Of course, we can't get our breaker in for the bottom, so we're going to use our air chisel with a big flat tip on it. And we're just going to hit the rail itself, and the vibration will break 90% of those welds loose. And whatever it doesn't, we're just going to wiggle it off of there. Okay, there's one that just won't stop fighting us, so we'll actually cut that one off. Real easy to get to, it just happened to be the little flange at the bottom. So our piece is off and we gotta clean it up and clean up all our spot welds and be ready to go on our other car. So let's take a look at the rest of our Mustang. 
I was actually kind of surprised how good a condition it was in. It was in the middle of nowhere, Missouri, so I guess it was far enough away from the big cities that it didn't get subjected to too much salt, so it's not too rusty. The only major spot of rust was right there behind the tire. Pretty bad, but it doesn't really match with the rest of the car. A couple of dents in our deck lid from hail, but not a big deal. We got our quarter panel trim. We got our steering column. I actually had an airbag in it. I saved that because I'm going to need it for our other build. And they gutted most of the door. So we still have a door shell. And our bottom seam is nice and clean. A little bit of surface rust. Clean out that seam sealer and a wire wheel will take care of that. No holes or anything. And a mirror. Deck wood seam is just as clean as our doors. Missing our license plate lights. We did get a spare tire. Got a few seat belts. Don't know where they belong or if they're any good. There's the inside of our quarter. Our luggage rack, our rear bumper's got a little hole in the end of it. Bottom of our quarter on this side is perfect. Gas tank is in decent shape. Our rear end slash boat anchor is still pretty decent looking. It's a 7.5, nobody wants those. This door has got a little dent in the front of it. Still has a mirror on it. When am I going to learn the outside handles never work? This door seam is just as good as our other one. This one doesn't have a glass in it. We stripped everything out of the inside of this one. Neither one had regulators. The lock actuators were frozen up. Big surprise. Uh, we got a hole in the floor that kind of matches the quarter on the driver's side. But that's it. The rest of the floor is really solid, including the torque boxes. Looks like we got a clock to bring on our steering wheel. The heater box. Our A pillars are in really good shape. So is our cowl panel. A little bit of rust at the bottom, but nowhere near as bad as they usually are. Our frame rails are in excellent shape. Not rotted out below the towers where they usually are. So I didn't mangle them just in case somebody wants to use original frame rails. No rust on this side, and this is a side that usually gets bad with the battery on it. No dents at all in our cowl panel. We got a wiper transmission and wiper motor. This A pillar is nice and clean. Little hole in the bottom of the rocker here. And we have a windshield and trim. Probably never get that windshield out of there without breaking it. So that's what's left. So I was trying to figure out where the rust came from on just that one lower piece of the quarter. And I thought maybe it was from the one tire fire throwing rocks on it uh, and not the other side. But then I saw this. And I'm wondering if the water doesn't come down here, drip down here, and then fill that pocket up until it rusts.
Back to the one tire fire theory, I guess. Science. So we have our radiator support and our aprons all drilled off. And I left everything together because it's extra spot welds that I don't really need to drill out, it just takes more time. And if I leave everything together, it gives me a better idea if everything slides right together like a puzzle piece. I know everything else is in the right spot. So now we're gonna get ready to throw it on our other Mustang. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. And if you want any parts off that other shell, uh, just send me an email. The link is in the description.